All right, I'm Shauna Waters. I am the Region 5 coordinator, so I have South Georgia. I have a very large region from basically Augusta all the way down. We are going to talk about learning styles, and I have some handouts for you. I apologize that they did not, I didn't give, I guess, clear enough instructions, and they're not all stapled together as one, but you might want to write on each so that you know that that's what they all represent. But um, this is a theory that has been in our education world for quite a while. I am actually, that is my area of expertise. I am a teacher, not actively teaching right now, but that is my area of education, was elementary ed. So learning styles definitely is something that we focused on and concentrated on. And I say theory because it truly is a theory. There are, as I was preparing for the seminar, there's a lot of other theories out there that totally want to debunk the learning styles theory, saying that it doesn't make a difference who the child is, what they do, or how they learn. It, it doesn't matter how they retain it at all. But we as a, our adventure coordinators and teachers in general in our, in our conference do believe that it does make a difference in who our children are and the quality of our teaching in connection with them individually. That that. So that is what we're focusing on tonight. That I ask the question, are all students created equal? No. Nope. Well, I do believe they're all equal. They're all given gifts. But equal's not same, right? They're not the same in any way, shape, or form. They don't learn the same. They haven't had the same prior experiences. When you say the word pie, you've got different people who will imagine. Come on in. Come join us. Here are the handouts. You have uh, children that will imagine pie. They'll smell pie. They'll remember the last pie that they had that they loved. Um, I'm actually going to set these back here so that people can pick them up as they come in. That might be more helpful. Welcome. Hello. So in that fact, we all know what pie is, but when we hear the word pie, pie t gives us different connotations depending on who we are and our past experiences. It has a lot to do with that. So the theory of learning styles speaks to the way each person best comprehends and retains or remembers the information. So if you're wanting them, as you're teaching awards and you're doing your staff work as an adventurer, you don't want it just to be something that they obtain for one night and it's out of their brain and it doesn't apply to their life anymore at all. You want it to be something, you want to know that what you're doing matters and that it's important which means that you want them to remember it. You want it to somehow impact their life, <coughs> change their life, connect them to God, whatever that is. But that means you need to get to them. You need to figure out what gets to them and how to do that. So we have the cognitive, emotional, and environmental factors, like we've talked about, the past, um, who they are, their experiences at home. They're just, all of those feed into how they are going to best learn. So what can we do? Is it's not just our adventurers, it's our staff too. Sometimes in ways of connecting and if we're directors and we're trying to connect with our staff and help them be in unity about something, you want to be able to figure them out and to know what makes them tick. So we have three, you have this in your page and the reason why it ended up separate was I wanted the the slide on your handout to be bigger and not one of the little ones so that you could see it better. We have three basic areas. We have auditory learners, we have visual learners, and we have kinesthetic learners. The auditory is those who it's important to hear something. So whether they're talking out loud to themselves or whether they're just listening to the teacher talk, it's important for them to hear it some way, some way shape, or form. The visual. Um, most kids will be visual. 
um, the small group of them will be auditory. So in that, you're standing up and talking for a long time. Is that going to hit the majority of your kids? No. no. So don't do it. You have to do some, but do it in a way that will intrigue them. It will interest them. It will pique their interest. But keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Visual. They've got to be able to see it. That's me. Don't tell me what I need to do. Show me what I need to do. If I, I have trouble with technology and my husband is good with technology and he'll try to tell me what to go in the other room and do, I'm like, no, that doesn't work. You gotta come show me because <laughs> I won't get it. I won't remember it. And then you have the kinesthetic. Those kids who just can't sit still, they've got to move. They've got to draw. They've got to, uh, to doodle while you're talking. They need to color a picture. They need to make a model. They need to, those kids have to touch the kinesthetic. They've got to use their hands, got to move their feet. And then you've got those who are probably the majority of, of our people <laughs> is a combination. There's a little bit of preference in multiple areas. And so that's why we've got the overlay of the Venn diagram because you do have some crossover. No, probably no kid is going to be one area. So in our practice, we're going to learn what we're learning, and then we're going to practice what we've learned. And in our practice, we're going to be making sure that we are covering all those areas. So if we're covering all three of these areas, we're going to be covering the kids who also have the crossover areas too. So we want to make sure that we do that in our teaching. So. Start off with the visual learners. You also have this in your handout too. The visual learners, what are they like? Who are they? What makes them, you know, if you're not a visual learner, then it might be more difficult to know what that is. So let's learn what it is. They want to observe rather than talk or act. Will this child want to get up and do a drama representation of something? Not necessarily. They're going to be less likely to get involved in that way. They want to watch it happen. Um, they're not very distractible. Why? Because they take in from their seeing. And they, they have learned how to hone in and to be focused with that. So they will not be distractible as much. They'll notice details. They'll walk in a room and they'll pick up what's going on very quickly because that's where they take in their information is through their eyes. Um, they like to see the pictures. Um, when they, oftentimes when they're looking at a book, they might just pick up on the, the little details of the picture. They might pick up on, on something that you're wearing or something, you know, something different. So they'll pick up on these things just from their sight. They like advanced planning. They like to know what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, and have a plan. They, they struggle with the verbal instructions because they want to see it. They want to see it. So if they're doing a, if you're teaching them a game, they're going to struggle with you telling them how to do it unless they're also somehow seeing somebody else follow those directions. When you tell them the directions of a game, they might not have a clue what you've just said, and they go into the game, and you would never know that they don't have a clue. They might not show you any affect on their face that they don't get it. But they'll wait until the game starts, and then they'll do what somebody else is doing because they see them doing it, hoping that that's what they're supposed to do. So those are your visual learners. Um, they typically have good handwriting and spelling because the sight matters. That's important to them. Um, so, how do we reach these kids? What can we do for them to maximize their quality time? You want to seat your visual learners close to the front where they can see clearly. They're not obstructed by heads. They're not obstructed by, by other kids that are passing back and forth. They want to see what's going on. They want to have include meaningful visual aids to support your instructions. So if you're verbally talking, it would be helpful for them to have a model or a map or an example of some other kids doing it. Something that gives them 
a visual connection of, oh, okay, I understand. They, they like colors to clue as important information. I, this is not as much for adventurers, but it's been interesting to me. My daughter's in eighth grade and her science teacher has them take very, very detailed notes. And she doesn't tell them how to color it, but that's one of the requirements is for them to go through and highlight in multiple colors. And I've been very intrigued in her methods and how she truly does connect to all these different types of learners. And those colors are important. So it's just a, a, just a side note. Um, and uh, not, again, not as much for adventures, but to encourage note taking. And sometimes if they're preparing for, it, for a test or if there is a written something that they have to do for you, then they like to recopy things, but they like to see have those have the pictures on the walls have the it a bland room is is not very helpful to them they want it happy they want it exciting they want it visually appealing that is your visual learners any questions about them or any personal experiences that you want to share about a visual learner that piqued your interest of yeah that's why they did that any thoughts i've become a visual learner you have Okay. What brought really that? Just, you know, read something, then execute it, but now I have to see, I have to see it. Okay. And have my hand held. Like sewing, for example, is like, you know, I just have to see, just have to see it. I'm a visual learner. Okay. Yeah, I seeing is important. See one do one. It's like learning the guitar. If I watch someone that's, and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. watch someone ski and I go ski. Watch them. Yeah, or like the the YouTubes that are out there. My husband does uh, not because he likes to, but he does a lot of car fixing. He'll go to a YouTube and he can find almost anything he wants to on a YouTube, and he'll watch them do it, and then he'll do it, and it all works out most of the time. <laughs> But watching uh, somebody. The closest thing to watching doing when we're in YouTube because we're yeah. with Tommy. Yeah. Always, yeah. But. Yeah. So those are visual. Auditory, mm -hmm. those who like to listen and to hear it. This is your smallest group. Your smallest group. Their characteristics, they like to talk to themselves. It makes sense, right? Because mm -hmm. the, the, the sound is important to them. Um, they're easily distracted because of that sound. They enjoy music, they hum, they sing. That's the interesting thing because I often whistle, but I am far from auditory. <laughs> but um, they like that sound. They would be, that it would be appealing to them. There's handouts on the back table if you'd like to pick a set of those up. If they walk into your adventure meeting and you have music playing, that would be important to them. That was something I always tried to do, um, and in my classroom too, that I always had music playing in the morning when they're first coming in, because it just creates a welcome atmosphere. And for those auditory learners, that's important to them. Um, they enjoy being read to or listening to audiobooks. I've never understood that because I'm the farthest thing from an auditory learner that you could be. But there are people, like my husband, he, he doesn't want to read a book. He'll listen to a book any day, ten times over, before you make him read a book. I need to meet your husband. <laughs> so there are people like that. And it just, he'll even listen to the Bible. I'm like, how can, and one of them that he listens to has this awful computer voice. I'm like, how can you listen to that? It's just, oh, distracting. I cannot follow because <laughs> I'm not seeing it. All right, so they struggle with written instructions. So you've got two different people. You've got the visual who will struggle with, uh, with the voice instructions. And then you've got the, the auditory who struggle with the written so it's called balance. It's called multiple avenues to reach all the kids so that you've known you reach, reach them all. They like to talk, which would make sense um, because they, the sound is important to them. So what can we do for these kids? Seat them away from distractions, probably in the front. 
that, that, that's my question. So if everyone's in the front, who's in the back? <laughs> or do we just end up with, you know, a couple rows close to us or circled around us? And those are important things for our little adventurers to sit on the floor and have them circle around us. Um, that works well. Use good expression when you're speaking. Don't have a monotone. Don't have a low, soft whisper. You want to speak, and you want to speak with, with inflections and excitement, and don't just act like you're bored and that you really wish you weren't doing this and it was just the worst thing possible because they'll just tune you out. They won't even hear it. Have them repeat important information. So if they hear something or if there's something that you've said that you want to make sure clues in. Okay, so Johnny, what is, the, what is another name for an elephant? Have them repeat it. A pachyderm. Okay, so you have them repeat. You do the, the repetition back and forth. That makes a difference for them. Use songs and catchy phrases. They like the poems. They like the, the songs that just go along or help them memorize, whether it's the books of the Bible, whether it's the, the states in the United States, whatever it is, there's songs. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is your best friend resource. There's songs for everything, so clue into those for these auditory learners. Have them explain or to teach others. Um, you don't have to be the only one. Once you've explained it once, once you've experienced it once, if there's somebody who's struggling, then have, have an auditory person go and it will only strengthen their knowledge and their expertise on that. So help them strengthen themselves by doubling yourself, you know, that's, that's a help to you, to have them help you. Have them brainstorm or study aloud. Have them talk about it. Group them in groups to experience something together, or to talk about something together, or to go find something together. Alone is not auditory. There's nothing auditory unless they're going to talk to themselves if they're alone. So give them a group that they can collaborate with. Okay? Any thoughts or experiences? For the auditory, what have you found that works? We're going to practice this more after we go through all of them, but just as we go. You have any thoughts? No? All right. To the active kids, the kids you might define as ADHD. Some of it might be that. Some of it might be that they just need to move. So those kinesthetic learners, they're frequently in motion. They'll be tapping their fingers, they'll be shaking their leg, they'll be just wiggling in their seat. They just have to move. They have to move. They like to touch people when they're talking. There are kids who don't like to be touched. And then there's kids who like to touch. And it's helping the kids learn personal space and a balance of that. And, and it's okay for people to like one thing and not the other. So they need to learn who is okay with touching? Who is okay with giving a hug? Who's okay? Um, I had that experience in my own family with two boys. One wanted to go slap the other one on the rear end, not for meanness, but as a buddy. Hey, buddy, as a brother. But the other brother did not appreciate that. That was far from his style. <laughs> and so just because one likes it doesn't mean you have to enforce that on the other. That's not fair to them either. So there's a balance of that. Um, they enjoy solving problems by physically working through them. Whether it's a Lego project or a coloring project or a, a cut and paste project, they like to do it. The puzzles. They will try new things and they're often very outgoing. They like that activity. Reading and spelling is not a priority. They'd rather do any day than to have to sit and write or read. So activity, activity, activity. So what can we do for these kids? Seat them towards the back of the room, why? So they can get up and move. If they need to stand up and walk or pace or just stand up, it's fine but they need to be in the back of the room so that they're not that distraction. They need to have frequent breaks. We've talked about that and I hope that you've already implemented that in your adventure clubs where you're not sitting and, do, whoops, sitting and doing something 
for 30 minutes. That's too long. The kids don't need to be doing that. They need to, those frequent breaks. They need 10 to 15 minute intervals. Unless they're doing an active project where they're already moving, then it's okay to, to lengthen it out. But if they're sitting, whether you're having them work on their workbook or whether they're working on something else, a sit down thing, 10 to 15 minutes, and then they need to get up and do something. That will help these kinesthetic learners, but it'll help the little kids in general, especially the little lambs and eager beavers. They need to move, they need to move. Um, they incorporate role play into your introduction. So we have this group who would like role play, and then you have the visual who would like to watch a role play, but they don't wanna do a role play. So you're gonna have kids that it, so you'll never have everybody up front doing a role play. There'll always be somebody who wants to watch, and that's okay. So allow that opportunity. Use models and real objects for visual aids. And then, for these kinesthetic kids, pass it around. They want to touch and feel. They want to experience it. They want to take in that information. That's how they take it in, is through their hands. So they love to touch and feel. Have them draw the information while they're learning it. So these kinesthetic, they need to move something, whether it's their hand or their feet or their body. They've got to move. And that is how they will learn. Any thoughts about these kids? We're kind of breezing quickly through because in our adventure clubs and in our awards, there's only so much flexibility. But we're going to talk about where, as you practice some of this um, information and how to apply it, that there is some flexibility, but there's a parameters that we have to stay around. So how can we think about all three of these kids, but think about the parameters that we have to stay within? So your next handout that you have is a stack of, there are four, four awards. We have bodies of water, we have birds, we have cooperation, and we have friend of Jesus. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to break up into two groups, two groups of four. And I want each of your groups, you can choose any one of these four awards. And we're going to talk about, you're in your group, you're going to talk about what you're going to do to accomplish these three basic kids within this whole award. So that somehow in the award, all of these kids are reached. Now what I was just talking about, how there's parameters. So when you read an award, you don't have to take it as the gospel truth. It has to be done word for word, action by action. But if it tells you to play a game about lakes and streams and rivers and oceans, that doesn't mean go see the river. It needs to play a game. Now you get to choose your game. Can I play a game? Oh, you could play a game because that would be more ex experiential. You definitely could. But you have to just, the example was such that don't go so far outside that you're not even doing the, the parameters of the award. Does that make sense? So my first column there that you see says, would you add or alter anything about this requirement? So that's if you would change anything or add anything so that you're going to meet the needs of one of the groups that's not already met somehow in these requirements, okay? Or if you're doing it as, as is, just leave it as is and there's really no explanation. But for visual learners, auditory learners, and kinesthetic learners, I'm not suggesting that every requirement has to meet the needs of every single th of the three groups. You need, every requirement needs to meet at least one of them. If it meets more, that's great. And if you can tweak it just a little bit so that it meets all three, fantastic. But you want at least somehow in the award, you're connecting specifically with every single child multiple times, not just once during the award. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is just kind of a grid that I've developed so that you it helps you process. Now when you go to teach an award, you don't have to fill out a grid to make sure that you're 
But this exercise will help train your mind to think about these three groups of kids, making sure that I've connected and it's going to be something that lasts because that's the important thing. You want, you want it to matter what you're doing. You're not doing it to waste your time. You're doing it to connect with them. So, and then at the bottom, is there any learning group you need to be observant of to make sure that they are connecting? There might be a particular group, either auditory, visual, or kinesthetic, that might have a little bit more trouble. Some awards are more sit down. So unless you specifically alter it in some way to meet the needs of those kinesthetic learners, you might need to be paying attention to those kinesthetic learners. Or if it's all active and kind of a free for all a little bit, then you're going to have to be paying close attention to the visual and the auditory because they're lacking that structure. So that's the basis of that question is who, who do you need to be t making sure that they're connecting in with, okay? All right, so one person from this side needs to go over to this side, I don't care who. Y'all are adults. <laughs> But if you go ahead and, and go through your, your, once you get into your group, figure out which award you want to go over. It doesn't matter. Hopefully the, the two groups will pick something different. And then afterwards we want to talk about it so that we can share our, our ideas with each other. Okay? All right. I love all the creative juices I've been hearing flowing. It's so exciting and I think you're so much on the right track of thinking about all three of these areas of kids that we want to connect with. So we, I heard this group was doing birds and this group was doing friend of Jesus. Who in your group would like to share what you've done so that the other group can jot down some notes maybe and save them some time and planning if they desire to teach that other award. Hi, we have a bird sharer. Brenda. No, let's do it. Go. All right, so for the first one, what do we say? We're going to change it to three yeah. because five may be a little too much for our five year olds. But um, for our vision, we're going to have books and pictures. And I think one insert into that yes. I think five is fine depending yes. on where you are and the common birds in that area. Because there might be. You know, we might be in New York City. Exactly. So your common birds are going to be fewer. But if you're by the beach, your common birds are going to be more. So I think it would depend on where you're at as to what's common. And those kids would already have some bit of experience to apply their new information to. So. Yeah, and I'm, I was okay with three, but it's like the ones are going to get named five. Yeah. But it's like the ones, I guess that's uh, encompassing the audio, what is it, kinesthetic and visual learning. Sure. It's like, don't put it too hard from that, that's what we were saying. Sure. Yeah. Okay, auditory learners, we're going to have sounds playing yes. while we're um, getting them to uh, tell us about the birds. And then the uh, kinesthetic learners, we're going to feathers or having like the birds mm. that are around. So we mm -hmm. have to do some research before we yes. um, come yeah. to the class. Name your state bird, we're going to leave it the way it is. We're going to have, again, pictures of the state bird. Um, maybe a, you know, a model or something for the kinesthetic to hold. Find the state bird. Ask, ask why. Ask why. Why? Why did they pick that bird? That's okay. State yeah, we can ask. Okay. You're going to put that for would you alter? Why? And have they seen it? And there are some of these states who have a state bird that nobody's, you know, the common, the commoner has never even seen. And why so, is that bird to that exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, we can add that to the requirement, or maybe not make a requirement, just educate them. Sure. Too many requirements, not yes. good. <laughs> right. I agree. Uh, and then um, we we could find on YouTube uh, the specific sound or uh, call uh -huh. that it makes. Uh -huh. Auditory learners. Name three kinds of bird foods. We're going to leave that the same as well. Um, and then for this, it's just have examples and let sure. them feel, touch, yes. pass mm -hmm. around, shake the seeds. Yes. Mm -hmm. That covers all three. Someone else want to take? Have a go. 
Let's split it Harvey's. <laughs> so number four, draw a picture. We said give them option of drawing, you know, or having a picture because some of them may not, you know, uh, know how to draw very well. I don't know everyone where they're at. We're going to have to figure it out with each. But um, having different colours for visual learners, having some bird sounds, you know, playing in the background while they're doing this activity, and then like for the kinesthetic up, cut, cutting out the pictures, maybe we can do that too, because they like to keep, play, yes, play, play with feathers. So yeah, we, we could do that, I guess. Mm -hmm. take, yeah, yeah there's bird books and stuff, they love mm -hmm. picking, picking out their favorite birds. And yeah, and so that's the thing too, we, we, we're people that, didn't know how to draw, but having pictures, yeah. we've got that here mm -hmm. too. Pictures so that it could reference. Uh, take their thumb mm -hmm. and make thumbprint yes. and put a little feet on it. Yes. And there we go. Those are cute. Yeah. <laughs> Those are cute. We usually come up with something. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that's a good one. Uh huh. Uh, make a pine cone bird feeder and hang it to uh, in your yard. So we came up. We could do that. Um, we can go look for, for pine cones. Don't know where you, where you guys all have pine cones. Oh, we live in South Georgia. You can take them all. No. Yeah. I got lots of pine My pine daughter pine would pine. love for you to come pick them up out of our yard for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just went over with my lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> Depends in the mulch. But um, what we could do, uh, we were saying the toilet paper, okay. and mm -hmm. the paper plate, make, yeah. make it. So that covers all bases to get them yes. hands on. And through this all, we've got to remember to the time because some of these learners don't like doing things for too long. So mm -hmm. we're going to help them along. Mm -hmm. Name two birds, mention the Bible. We'll leave that. And then um, we said for someone to get the Bible, yeah, they can it. And the auditory learners, they're going to read it because they like to hear themselves read. Yeah. And, then them. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the visual going to get them to look it up. Look it up. And, but you're talking little lambs. They do not read it. Eager beavers. Eager beavers. Five and six. Some of them don't. Some of them don't. Some of them do. That's why we said we'll help them. Another option is to use like the My Bible Friends mm -hmm. that has a lot of picture and a little bit of writing and hand them a book that you know there's a picture of a bird in. Noah. Yeah. Um, you've got Noah's Ark. You've got the ravens coming to visit. Yeah. I never remember. Elijah. Um, so hand them a book that you know there's a bird in and let them find it. And talk about the story talk that way. The story, yeah. And then the last one, no two bird sounds, and pretend that you're a bird. We're gonna leave that, and then um, just have the sounds, but also let them make the sounds. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so hold the bird, and you know that makes the sounds, and as they do the hot potato, it's making yeah, the, like the bird thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know there are little. Have you seen those little birds yeah. that 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 make a sound in them? Those are yeah. fun. So, yeah, so getting something like that. Very good. All right. Thank you. Did it sound like it was going to be a fun class? Definitely. Yeah. I'd like yeah. I'd like to do that class. Yes. What we did first was we put an X by what we saw what the question looked like the most. And we, and we saw very readily which learning style wasn't wasn't covered, which was the story. Sure. And it was kind of an eye opener. It is, and that's why I did this format, oh. because it is an eye-opener of, ooh, I need to make sure that I'm reaching all of them. Yes. It's good. Easy. Good realization. With some of them, to get all of them. That's why staff needs to. All right, friend of Jesus, we're short on time. We've got another, our general session that starts upstairs in just a few minutes. So you want to share briefly what you've. And you can even just highlight because you have more requirements on yours. Why don't you just pick out like a couple of your favorites? Okay. When you tell a friend about Jesus and how good he is to you, you could tell a personal story, especially for the auditory ones. Mm -hmm. Just a very interesting short story about something that happened to you personally. And it's only Jesus that really could have helped you get out of that situation. Sure. For the kinesthetic pictures and uh, drawings, mm -hmm. for the visual, yes, pictures too. Uh, invite a friend to G invite a friend to a church meeting. We have that make an invitation. Mm -hmm. The visual mm -hmm. make an invitation. Mm -hmm. Other one was tell why 
You should be kind to animals. You can actually talk about some pets. Have the kinesthetic one the brain like some mm -hmm. stuff. Animals. Touch and feel. <laughs> sure. But then like, most children like to hear about pets. So, yeah. When they read a short thing about it, the auditory ones will be listening or mm -hmm. they bring some stuff. To it's that. good. And be able to say a prayer at mealtime and one at bedtime. I usually like to have adventurous practice to pray about. Yes. Take yes. turns or take, you know, leading out. Because mm -hmm. we're developing leaders. That's right. One That's thing right. we've done, in, and it's not in sunbeams and, you know, it's not an adventure, but in primary class, um, at the very end, I just shout, group hug. And they all come up and they form a circle mm -hmm. and they gather each other around the shoulders. That has done more to That's build neat. community and comfortableness with each other because that Good. Uncle Charles has the prayer. That's the male influence that mm -hmm. somebody don't have. Mm -hmm. And then Very they, important. they're all connected as they walk out the door because they, they feel like a, a brother or sister. That's there. awesome. Very good. And you can do that with adventures. We probably should start doing that. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Or the cinnamon roll hug. Have you ever done the cinnamon roll hug? Where everybody gets in a line. They all hold hands and start in the center. And you just start twirling around in a circle. And eventually you're all wrapped up in a circle as a, you know the whip kindly fills in around it. And then the end, you just you squeeze in. And that's always a, a similar but a variety. We don't, we don't hug these kids enough because we're yeah. so afraid of being accused of it. I know it. it. But I get, know it. Get to that, if you get to that side hug approach, yes. when they walk in the door, when they walk out the door, when you're in a group, mm -hmm. yeah, same yeah. closing prayer. Yeah, just side hug is the key. Watch, watch, watch side hug. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah, it is. They hug me all the time in church. Side hug. You know, it works with adults come, too. We've had some some grumpy church members who, by the time we've left that church, have completely done a, a 180 because we've loved them, we've hugged them, and we never gave up, even when we had to hug a grumpy person, even when it was it was a cold hug, a cold person you're hugging. By the time we were done, they were warm, and it works for adults. So.